Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sandford. I'm CEO of the Commonvision Group and also VCDX number 203. I'm going to present to you today um, how to migrate VCNS into NSX. So we are going to go from VCNS 5.5 to NSX 6.1, which is in our case a two-step process. But let's go through it step by step. First of all, log into your VCNS appliance. Um, I'm going to use the admin user in this case um, to log into my box. And then once you are inside the admin box, you are going to go to settings and reports. The first step here is that we need to upload the update pack. So from the NSX homepage, you can, or from the MyVMware homepage, you can basically download a VCNS to NSX upgrade pack. And this is what we are going to upload here um, into the system. Um, in our case, I only could find one up to version 6.2.0. So I'm going to do this now um, from VCNS 5.5 to NSX uh, 6.2. Zero, and then add a secondary step where we upgrade NSX from 6 to 0 to 6 to 1. So overall, this is actually a pretty streamlined process. It depends a bit. If In our case, we only had VXLANs in, in use, so it was a rather simple process. If you are having a lot of um, edges and other things, you are better going to check finally what's exactly in the documentation. But in most cases, you can just upgrade the edges afterwards. The only thing where you need to be careful is if you are using the data loss prevention um, of the old type, that actually um, is not 100% compatible with the new um, NSX system, but that's in the release notes. If all worked as expected, you can now hit the install button to get the NSX um, conversion started. You can also see the version from 5.5 to 6.2. And this is going to take a bit. OK. And here we see a very common error, actually. And that's also why I kept this in the recording. Um, we get the message there is insufficient disk space. So to fix this, we now have to do some changes on the VCNS appliance. To create some space on our appliance, uh, just log into the console. You could also do it with SSH, so that's um, you then need to start the SSH server. That's what I just showed here. Um, you can also do it directly from the command line here. So we do run a show file systems, which shows us file system is full. You then issue the purge log manager and purge log system, which will immediately release, not immediately, but actually purge on the next reboot the system. So we can see if we run another show file systems, the system is still full. Next step is now to actually reboot the system, which is going to take a couple of minutes. And during the reboot process, it's going to really purge the files. There is basically no real way, at least none which, is, which I found documented, which allows you to purge these files um, while the system is running. There are other hints where people actually tell you to resize the volumes and stuff like that. It doesn't really help you that easily. So this is the quickest solution. So let's log in as admin again. And we can see startup is not completed, but we should be able to validate quickly if the file system is actually um, looking better now. And we can see that we have on both disk space. So let's log into the system again and restart the overall process. So in our case, log in as admin again. And then luckily, it didn't actually remove the file. So we can go to the update segment. And here, you can just hit the Install button and uh, confirm the install. And hopefully, this time, the install will actually go through. Um, it takes a couple of minutes. It's going to. Um, validate that the file is correct and then it's going to do quite a few replacement and then we will see that the system is going to do a reboot once it's completed. So once the update is completed we can basically log into the new um, NSX box. So for that let's quickly check 
that the reboot is completed. There are quite a few steps and it's, it has to create all the databases, etc. So this might take a couple of minutes. In my case, I think it took roughly 10, 15 minutes um, until this one was completed. And once that is actually completed, we can then go into the UI and log in and we will see immediately the new NSX login screen. So again, login credentials as before. The admin user we created before is going to stick the same. So log in and we can see that the system is up and running. It has should normally automatically connect itself to vCenter server. One thing to change is um, NSX has some issues with um, FQDNs for syslog. So we are going to change that from the name to the IP address. Rather quick change, actually. Um, we are also going to quickly change the host information. That is something which I saw during the upgrades is not necessarily coming over. So in our case, we are going to give it VCNS Cloud and uh, gr.cdip.net for the domain name. Um, we leave the host name just because all other systems are referring to this um, name, DNS and fully qualified domain name is set up for it. Now we are going to quickly do the upgrade. Um, for that, again, there is a targc file um, which you can download. This will bring us from 6.2 to 6.2.1. So once it's uploaded, it asks us whether we want to enable SSH. We want that in our case for troubleshooting purposes. You need to validate that for your infrastructure if that makes sense. Then you hit the upgrade button and then again, the system is going to do some magic. And once it's completed, it basically automatically reboots the NSX instance and then you can log in again and validate that everything is up to date. So. I'm not sure if there are going to be um, new um, VCNS to NSX upgrades higher than 6.2. In my case, as I said, I only found the one up to 6.2.0 and then I used the upgrade pack from 6.2.0 to 6.2.1. So once that upgrade is also completed, let's quickly see if the connection to the vCenter server is properly set up. We can see that both the lookup service and the vCenter server is bo are both connected. Um, if you are going to use SSO authentication and stuff like that, you need to have the lookup service um, linked as well. It sounds a bit weird from the naming up there. It gives you a bit of a different feeling, but um, set up both um, just to make your life easier. Let's go back to the appliance summary and see that all services are up and running. The only one which is missing is the universal service. That's if you have multiple vCenters and NSX linked. Now let's quickly head over to the vSphere web client and see if we can actually access our NSX infrastructure. So if everything in the migration went smoothly, we should now actually see that the system has um, networking and security in it. The next step now is to actually deploy um, NSX controllers and then um, upgrade the ESXi hosts, which is what we are going to do next. But first let's see that we have networking and security in here. So next we are going to uh, roll out the controllers as said. So um, go to the installation tab, hit um, the plus um, or click the plus symbol to create a new controller, um, select the data center you want to use, the cluster resource pool for it, the data store, um, we have a folder for our NSX controllers in our case, and pick which network, which in our case management network, they are going to be connected to. So that is the network which is used for the communication in the first place between the individual systems. So NSX manager and controllers, and later on controllers to ESXi hosts. Uh, we will create an IP pool for that. We will create only an IP pool for NDP um, NSX controllers. So we are now going to name it NSX controller. We identify what the default gateway is. We specify the prefix lengths. In our case, it's a class C network. Uh, we define DNS servers. Um, although at this point, the NSX controllers don't really speak DNS. 
but maybe in a few draw point uh, they will do and then we don't need to make any just uh, modifications here and then we define the range of IP addresses you could also specify um, individual ones but um, uh, yeah the second one needs to be complete um, and then once the IP pool is defined you can select that IP pool and from here you can then go and specify the password for the NSX controllers. Um, this is only done on the first controller. You will later see when we do the additional controllers that you will no longer be asked as this is synchronized information. This is going to be identical across all three NSX controllers. Why three? Two would be not be good enough because in case you have a split brain situation, you, so you want to be sure that one wins. Um, that's the side where you have two. Um, you could also, in theory, do 5 and 7. However, um, there has been a later um, support statement by VMware which says 3 is the primarily supported configuration for NSX. So now the controller is going to be deployed. And once it's ready, we are going to um, quickly do the next one. So the second one. And the procedure for the third is going to be identical, so I'm going to skip showing you exactly how we do the third one, just actually to keep this movie in a, in a rather short way. So again, select the IP pool and hit OK. That's basically all you need to do. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward process. So no big surprises so far on the migration from um, VCNS to NSX. So as we can now see, so second is there and we added the third one in parallel as well. So we now have three NSX controllers running in our environment, um, all three of them up to date, and they have all the necessary links between each other. So the next step is now that we're actually going to upgrade the VXLAN modules on our host. So you can see here, the system has identified there is a legacy module in place. Again, this would still be working. And then you can basically tell the system now to upgrade the legacy systems. For this, it's going to deploy new VIP modules onto the hosts, replace the existing ones, and reconfigure the VTABs um, if necessary. Um, just to be sure this means you are going to see that the hosts are going to go into maintenance mode and um, finally they are also going to be rebooted at one point, uh, need, to, need to be rebooted at one point. Um, you can do that one by one, nothing really big, it's just a step-by-step -step process you have to go through to get all of them into a nice um, and, and easy uh, procedure. And once all these reboots are done, you can basically you get to a system where it tells you that all of them should be green, so it's going to finally enable all the agents and everything. So this is a pretty smooth and straightforward process, as you could see. So all of our hosts in our scenario are up to 621. Everything is enabled, everything is configured, and good to go. Thanks for watching. My name is Yves Sanford, um, CEO of the Comdivision Group and also VCDX number 203. If you want to reach out to me, um, you find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Yves Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thanks for watching and have a good time.